So the first question is, when does chemistry begin? Long, long time ago. It's just a theory. It's, uh, Scientists thought that, that it was the chemistry was first began when a uh, human being came to know how to lit the fire because they think fire is the basic need to proceed a chemical reaction, right? So this is so this was about seven hundred fifty thousand years ago. Since then, chemistry was used in a number of arts and crafts, directly or indirectly, like making uh, parts, clay parts, or making weapons, or any other thing like this. Okay? As, as you can see on the screen, pottery making, glass making, dyeing, all of these are the net uh, uh, processes which were invented by human beings long, long time ago, right? See, what is next? Metallurgy. What is metallurgy? Minerals. You all you know that what do you mean by the word minerals? Minerals, something which is, uh, you can find, you can dig out from the earth, is called a mineral. Okay, so when you dig out something, if it contains a suitable quantity, a reasonable quantity of metal, and you want to separate, you want to extract metal from that mineral, this process is called metallurgy. So, in Balochistan, we have an, an area called Zendek. There you can find number of uh, important minerals, metals, like gold, like copper, like uranium, etc, etc. So gold is extracted from minerals, copper is extracted from minerals. This is called metallurgy. So according to our book, remember we are following strictly our syllabus. We are limited within the boundary of the syllabus. Okay. So uh, there are three different uh, eras, important eras, which, uh, which you can see on the screen. The Greek period, the Muslim period, and the modern period. So we will try to cover these periods, these eras, one after the other. Look. <laughs> Greek, it's long time ago, around uh, uh, the Greek period was a period of around 2500 to 3500 years ago. These, they, they were not considered as scientists, rather they are, uh, are called philosophers, Greek philosophers. Why? Because they do not they did not believe in experiments, practicals. They rather believed in philosophy, telling the uh, a thing in a logical way. Means they can uh, they, means they can prove like uh, they are uh, going a class. The uh, uh, grief hospital is there, and you can prove that there is raining outside. But he, uh, he did not bother to go out and see either it is raining or not. Okay, means only logic, no experimentation, no confirmation. That is why they are called armed chair philosophers. Okay. So why are they called armchair philosophers? Because they did not believe in practicals, experimentations, etc., etc. They give theories. So, so some of the Greek uh, philosophers. Number one is Socrates. 
he is considered the most prominent greek philosopher remember you are not uh, going to write in your notes the contributions of these greek philosophers is just for info so he was the first one who created the first uh, philosophy uh, school of philosophy in west especially then the next is plato who was plato he was the founder of a platonist school of thought it was the first institution of higher learning in the western world around uh 2500 years back then another one is the aristotle might be you have heard his name aristotle again he was a greek, very very greek uh, very, very very prominent greek philosopher polymath polymath means a very learned person who knows uh, different uh, uh, skills different uh, areas but of knowledge etc and he was the student of plato aristotle was the student of plato and who will tell me not now afterward you can mail me that why was aristotle famous for how did he sacrifice his life okay and he was the first one he was the founder of lyceum what is lyceum that is an uh, that is a school cambridge school in karachi but that is i'm not talking about that lyceum but it is the first uh, athens athenian school long long time ago three, around 300 and uh, uh, 330 35 bc so what are we doing we are trying to cover few prominent greek philosophers why they called philosophers because they did not believe in categories like socrates like plato like aristotle and what else is pythagoras grade 8 maths pythagoras theorem remember hypotenuse square is equal to perpendicular square plus base square i think most of you remember you have used this theorem in different uh, in solving different math problem or might be somewhere in science also c square is equal to a square plus b square this was give, uh, that, uh, given by mr pythagoras that is why it is called pythagoras theorem this is one of the most important theorem in math so that is why i just wrote here is on the one contribution which is very very important pythagoras theorem right besides this so many other greek philosophers were there like democritus democritus he was the first one who proposed the theory for the structure of atom according to mr democritus uh, that matter is composed of tiny indivisible particles he called those particles atoms not atoms atoms okay so what are we going to remember from all this discussion number 1 the various names of greek philosophers very very short half line their their contributions that's it okay what is written at the right top of this slide important means if it is asked to write a note on greek period then you should cover these points okay like uh, greek philosophers philosophers are the arm chair philosophers and what else they were the first one especially the, the democritus who gave the concept of elements atoms means atoms and the chemical reactions you right and what else they have contributed in uh, chemistry besides other areas 